My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the first reading of today from the book of Exodus and the gospel reading, the gospel according to John, this readings reflect the grumblings against God. The truth is this, nothing can truly satisfy the greed, the greed and the selfishness of the human heart. Look down through the Old Testament, as we saw in today's first reading. Through the New Testament, see the complaint of these people against Jesus. Even to our own time, we come to discover that nothing can truly satisfy the greed and the selfishness of man. The argument is always the same. We often, oftentimes, we tend to forget, we tend to forget the deeds of the Lord, like the people of Israel. We often forget to count our blessings. We are always quick to complain. We are always quick to complain about God not being there for us, to complain about God forsaking us, even when times were tough, when the going was rough. We accuse God of not, not being supportive, not being there for us. And that was the problem the people of Israel had in the first reading. These people forgot how God brought them out from the land of Egypt. They forgot all the marvelous works that God did, the plagues. They forgot how God was able to divide the Red Sea and he brought them through. They forgot all the battles God had fought for them. God decided to take these people through the wilderness for a reason. Because the Bible said that there was a shorter route, there was a shorter way that ordinarily, if they had gone through that way, they would have been, they would have been in the promised land so quickly, so fast. But God, God decided to take them through the wilderness because God wanted to teach these people a lesson. And that's the lesson of trust. Because these people had been in the land of Egypt for over 400 years. So God decided to bring them out because he saw their sufferings. They, had, they kept on crying out to God because God said to Moses, I have seen the sufferings of my people. So God decided to bring them, to take them through the wilderness because God wanted to deepen his relationship with them. And today we see them complaining of bread. Now why did Moses bring them out to die of starvation in the wilderness? That it was better for them if Moses had left them in the land of Egypt where they had their fill. They said they sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. They quickly forgot all that God had done. Of course, it is in the nature of man. So God decided to rain manna on them. But God gave an instruction. God gave an instruction on what they were expected to do. And this is what God said to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, the people are to go out and gather their daily portion, their daily portion. And the essence of gathering their daily portion was to teach them to trust in the Lord, to think of what they are to eat that day, to trust that God will provide that for, the, for what they are going to eat the next day. And that is what we say in our Father. We pray that our Father, give us this day our daily bread. We should think of this day. But like as I said, the selfishness and greed in the heart of man will always make us. We are not contented of just this day. We are contented of tomorrow, the next tomorrow, and, and forever, as the case may be. So God wanted to teach these people to trust in divine providence, to have faith, to have confidence and trust in the Lord. In the gospel reading, Jesus saw this crowd, this huge crowd, people, crowd of people coming to him. You know, the last Sunday, we read the, uh, from the same gospel of John chapter 6. So Jesus was on the mountain when this 
Huge number of people were coming to him, this huge crowd. So last Sunday when Jesus saw them, Jesus saw the sincerity in their hearts. Because for the first time they heard about Jesus. They heard about this great prophet that God has raised up among them. So they had heard of the so many wonders that he had done. The so many miracles he had brought to the sick. So many healings. So these people were coming to Jesus in last Sunday's gospel reading. They were coming to him for healing, for nourishment, spiritual nourishment. So Jesus saw them and he saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. And that was why he not only nourished them spiritually, Jesus went as far as providing food for them. He multiplied the loaves. So these people, after that miracle, they now saw Jesus as their miracle worker. So they said to themselves, it is better we get hold of him immediately and crown him the king because we have seen our Messiah who is here to give us our bread. So their understanding of Jesus, the, that Jesus is the Messiah, they saw it from an, from an, from a, from a, an economic point of view. So in today's gospel reading, Jesus saw these people coming to him. And Jesus said to them, you are not coming to me because of the signs, but because the last time you ate your feel. And this is what Jesus said. He said, you are not looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and we are filled. And Jesus said to them, do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. These people, they complained, they grumbled. For them, how can Jesus give them this hard teaching? that they have to eat his body and drink his blood. So, so many of them left him because for them it was a hard teaching. So Jesus said to them, you must walk, you must walk for the food that endures to eternal life. And they, they went ahead to ask Jesus, what are the works that is expected of us? What can we do to accomplish the works of God? And Jesus told them, you have to believe in the one that God has sent. You have to believe in the one that God has sent. So here is the lesson. Jesus is teaching these people that you have to seek for the spiritual nourishment, the spiritual bread, not just the physical bread. Because that is the problem we have in our world today. The problem of prolifer proliferation of churches Yes, there are more Christians in our world today, but there, there, there is less spirituality. There are a lot of Christians. But with all, yes, the number of Christians we have all over the world, but you discover evil continues to abound. My dear brothers and sisters, so what Jesus expects of us, his expectation of us this day he expects us to walk for that which will endure, not for that which will pass away. That is what he expects of us. Because you come to discover in our world, a lot of pastors, a lot of so-called men of God, there are a lot of people out who preach the gospel of prosperity. And that is what threatens the gospel of prosperity. So you need to hear people give their testimonies of the faithfulness of God. So people tell their testimonies from the perspective of financial breakthrough, how successful they have been, how, how, how they have been so blessed from the physical point of view. So it is not based on the spiritual, which, which is centered on the conversion of our hearts. The conversion of our hearts, the greed and selfishness in our hearts. And it's supposed to be that from that perspective. And that is what Jesus expects of us. And that is why in today's second reading, St. Paul says to us, he said, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life. You must put away the old self of your former way of life and be corrupted through deceitful desires. You must be renewed in the spirit of your minds. You must put on the new self. So what are those old ways? What are, what are those old ways of life? 
Begin to talk about selfishness, greed, every vice you can think of. Because Jesus has given us his body, which is the Eucharist. You cannot receive the Eucharist and still be the old person you have been. Because the expectation is that we ought to be renewed. The Eucharist ought to renew us. And the question now is, why is, why is it that even after receiving the Eucharist, we still remain the way we are? The answer is this, in today's gospel reading, Jesus expects us to bear fruit because Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. And here is it. You can never do the work of God if you are not of God. You need to be of God to be able to do the work of God. You need to abide in the vine for you to be able to bear fruit. Because cut off from the vine, you can do nothing. And Jesus has given us the Eucharist. He expects us to trust, to trust in his providence. Because like the people of Israel in today's first reading, who we are journeying through the wilderness, you and I, we are journeying through the wilderness of this life. And we are journeying towards the kingdom of God, which is our promised land. There are trials, there are sufferings, there are tribulations. God expects us to trust him. Things might not be going the way you expect. Things might not work out the way you expect. God expects us to trust him because he has got good plans for us. Jesus has given us the gift of his body. And the question here is, in our world today, so many Catholics no longer believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. The doctrine of the real presence. So many Catholics even doubt that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. As a Catholic, do you know the basis of your faith? Do you know the catechesis of your faith? Do you know what happens here on the altar? Because if you have a better understanding of your faith, you don't even need anyone to talk to you about it if you are convinced of what you believe. The doctrine of transubstantiation, do we know what it is all about? Do we know what it is all about? It is not enough here that I am a Christian, like as I said, we'll come to church. Do I have a relationship with God? That is what matters. What is my relationship with God like? Do I have Jesus? Do I have him as my personal Lord and Savior? That is what matters. So as we journey through this life, who has God to give us the grace to be able to appreciate what the greatest gift God has given us, the gift of the Eucharist. Because oftentimes, you can have treasure right under your feet without even knowing it. So we we'll ask God to help us. Because I have, come to, I have come across people who are not even Catholics, who even understand the Eucharist even more than those who are Catholics. There are people who are not Catholics. Why back in Nigeria? I have seen people who are not Catholics come to the chapel of adoration to come pray. They are not Catholics. But they believe in that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. So we pray and ask God to help us this day, that as we journey through this life to God, that God will help us. He will continue to strengthen our faith so as to be able to inherit the promise he had made to those who remain steadfast to the end. I should pray and ask God to bless his words in our hearts through Christ our Lord.